What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Fantasy Mafia podcast. This is going to be a mini episode here. My goal is essentially I am going to break down the Texans and Chiefs Thursday night game in week one of the 2020 season. My name is Jordan Jica, a.k.a. Dr. Fantasy, so let's roll into the game tonight. I know everybody's excited for some football, and I'm going to give a fantasy preview for you guys tonight, uh, position by position, but before I do that, the uh, the line tonight is the Chiefs by nine points. These teams surprisingly played two games against one another last year. Week six, the Texans got the best of the Chiefs. 131 to 24 and then they rematched in the AFC playoffs the Chiefs won 51 to 31 after a pretty epic comeback where they scored 41 straight points Uh, so you really saw two outcomes there which is something that I'll get into in a minute Uh, another PSA that I have is if you do have a Thursday night player that you're playing never flex them It leaves you with a lot less flexibility, no pun intended, in your fantasy lineup. So we'll use Tyreek Hill, for example. If you put Tyreek Hill in your flex and you have a player later in the week that goes down, it leaves you a lot less flexibility. Normally, if you had that flex open, you'd be able to shift your lineup around and play a wide receiver, running back, or a tight end there. But if Tyreek Hill is already locked in there from Thursday night football, he's going to be locked in and you really have no other options. So if you have a Thursday night player, make sure you're playing them at their position, whether it's running back, wide receiver, tight end. So uh, always have that PSA. That's more for newer players. Those of you that have been playing for a while typically know that strategy, but it's always a PSA in case you haven't heard that strategy before. Uh, Another note that's not really fantasy related. Well, it will be, and I'll get to this more when we talk about the wide receivers, but Brandon Cooks is questionable for tonight's game. Me personally, this probably is going to make me steer away from him, but I know a lot of people drafted Brandon Cooks as their wide receiver two, maybe wide receiver three, and are relying on him this week. A lot of people have high expectations for him to have a heavy volume as the Texans' number one wide receiver, even with Will Fuller there. So uh, Brandon Cooks is questionable. Fantasy implications there that I'll get to in a moment. But let's kick it off with the quarterbacks here. Two no-brainer starts, in my opinion, and this is a perfect chance for me to say, Don't overthink it. Patrick Mahomes was drafted as either the first or second quarterback off the board if he's on your team. This is a fantastic matchup. The Texans gave up the fourth most points to quarterbacks last season, and that's fantasy points. And their secondary really hasn't changed. Vernon Hargraves and Bradley Roby are still the starting cornerbacks for the Houston Texans. So this is a great game for Patrick Mahomes. When you look at his success against the Texans last year, we saw kind of two outcomes. In the game that they lost, Patrick Mahomes had 270 plus yards and three touchdowns. And then in that wild game in the playoffs where the Chiefs scored 51 points, Patrick Mahomes did have five touchdowns, but either way, this is a guy that's a QB one and uh, he scores as such almost every single week. So there's no reason to overthink it. It's a great matchup. He's a great quarterback and a great system. You start him every single week. Mahomes is one of the most matchup proof Q- matchup proof QBs in the league. Moving over to Deshaun Watson, the Chiefs gave up the 18th most fantasy points to quarterbacks last season. So more of a mid-range matchup, but either way, if this game turns into a shootout, I mean, Deshaun Watson could easily be the number one overall QB this week, number two if he's competing with uh, Patrick Mahomes. But he definitely has top five upside each and every single week. When you look at his success last year, in the week six win when they won 31 to 24, he had 27.4 points against the Chiefs, which was good for QB five that week. So you really Deshaun Watson, ever since he's come into the NFL, has been a top five fantasy QB. And it's not time to start questioning that now. I know I have in a few leagues where I have two higher end QBs because they fell to me. I don't really love doing that, but I have Deshaun Watson and Kyler Murray in a few leagues. So if you're making that decision, Watson has the easier matchup compared to Kyler Murray against the 49ers. So Deshaun Watson is really a no-brainer start to me unless you somehow also have Mahomes or Lamar Jackson on your team. So once again, don't overthink it. It's a good matchup for these guys and you should be playing them. 
Running back is where it gets a little more interesting here. Both of these teams have a brand new running back situation. I'll start off with the Chiefs. I know everybody has Clyde Edwards-Alaire on their mind and a lot of groups that I'm in, including the Fantasy Hotspot. Everybody is talking about whether or not they should play play Clyde Edwards-Hilaire? To me, the answer is yes, unless you have a much better option. Realistically, if you've done a draft within the last month or so, you've taken Clyde Edwards-Hilaire in the first round as your RB1. And I'm sorry, if it's week one, it's not time to get cute yet. Now, later in the season, if he starts to struggle, even if we get two, three weeks where he's really struggling, then yeah, absolutely, he's not a must start. But at this point, he has a lot of upside when you looked at Damian Williams' success against the Texans last year, that just makes the point even better. He had three total touchdowns in the playoff matchup. The Texans gave up the 10th most points to running backs last season, so it's a very favorable matchup. I do expect Darrell Williams to be involved. In the three games, which he had more than 10 touches, he did average over 15 fantasy points. So he is not as terrible as everybody's making him out to see. And that's Daryl Williams, not Damian. Daryl Williams is now the second back in Kansas City. So either way, I think if this is a shootout, Allaire has that nice safe floor as well because he is the receiving option out of the backfield. You could see a scenario in which maybe he only has 40 yards of rushing, but he could have four or five receptions. So in PPR leagues, to me, that gives him a really nice floor. So I'm still firing up Alaire if you took him in the first round, unless you have dominating running backs and really can afford to sit him. I have him as my RB15 this week, so not really an RB1, more of a, I would say mid to back end RB2 is where Alaire will finish. But based on his receiving upside alone, it gives him a nice floor. Then on the other side uh, for the Texans, we have David Johnson. And if you wanted me to really break this game down, I think David Johnson is the key to this game, 100%. When you look at the Texans when they won 31-24 to in Week 6 last season, they had over 200 yards of rushing. Carlos Hyde had 116 rushing yards. The key to beating the Chiefs is controlling the clock keeping Patrick Mahomes off the field and pounding it down their throat. If the Texans want to win tonight, and that's what they're going to have to do, I fully expect them to use their new toy in David Johnson and really pound the rock. I wouldn't be surprised if David Johnson had 120-plus scrimmage yards and one or two touchdowns. I really think that's the key to this game is whether or not the Texans can control the clock with David Johnson. So he's a must-start for me this week, and I wouldn't be surprised if he had big t- a big-time game tonight. Heading over to the wide receivers, Tyreek Hill, you drafted him as your wide receiver one. I already mentioned Mahomes has a nice floor and really high upside in this matchup. So you're starting Tyreek Hill. Don't overthink it. Start him. He's your wide receiver one. If you're looking for a sleeper, maybe you have some early season injuries. If you have David Montgomery, maybe who are you, you were going to be playing in your flex. I don't mind taking a chance on Sammy Watkins or McCole Hardman. Like I said, if this becomes the kind of matchup where the Chiefs have to score 51 points to win, they could have a lot of upside. And really, that's the range of outcomes for this game. So you really have to look at the upside versus the safe option. I think the safe option is that 31-24 to game we saw in Week 6. And even still, Mahomes had a very successful game. And then the upside is an absolute uh, slugfest where we have over 80 points in both quarterbacks throw for over 350 yards and three, four, five touchdowns. And in that case, these wide receivers are going to have nice games and there's some upside there. So if you're looking for a dart throw flex play, I don't mind either one of those guys, the chiefs. uh, And then uh, on the other side, I'll move over to the Texans wide receivers. I would sit Brandon Cooks. I kind of mentioned this before, but number one, he might be on a snap count if he does play. It's never great when you're dealing with an early season injury, and we see more oftentimes than not a guy like that may be only playing 50% of the team snaps. And already, surprisingly enough, I don't think a lot of people realize, but the Chiefs gave up the second fewest points to wide receivers last year. So this is actually a really challenging matchup. So between that and the injury concerns early in the year, I'm sitting Brandon Cooks. Uh, you know, hopefully you have a better option than that. I know a lot of people took him as a starter, but uh, I think that he is probably not in for a big game for your lineup. Uh, On the other end, Will Fuller, if Brandon Cooks does sit, I am starting Will Fuller, even if I am worried about the matchup a little bit. The reality is, if this does turn into a slugfest, 
Will Fuller has huge upside. He's going to have volume. He's going to have targets. Same thing with Randall Cobb. If you're in a deep PPR league where you start four or five wide receivers, which I'm in a few, Randall Cobb is a nice under the radar play as well because Brandon Cooks is realistically taking a lot of those short to intermediate routes where Will Fuller is a deep ball threat. So Randall Cobb will probably step in and take a lot of those shorter looks. So uh, Randall Cobb, a nice dart throw in deeper PPR leagues. Will Fuller, I'm personally starting him because of his upside. If you play three wide receivers, I'd play him as a wide receiver three. We've seen Will Fuller at big games. And if this is a game with 80 plus points again, Will Fuller has huge upside. If it's more of the kind of game where David Johnson's controlling the clock, I think that maybe Will Fuller won't have as, well, obviously Will Fuller won't have as much upside, but he's still going to have to be the number one target there with Brandon Cooks out. So I, I still like Will Fuller if Brandon Cooks is sitting out, even with a tough matchup. Tight end wise, not a ton to talk about. You took Travis Kelsey as the first or second tight end off the board. You're starting him. I mean, that's the reality. There's not a matchup in the world that you sit Travis Kelsey for. On the Texans side, I'm probably not starting Darren Fells or Jordan Akins. Darren Fells did quietly have seven touchdowns last season, three games with multiple touchdowns. He's very touchdown dependent, and that's the reality with him. He's the kind of guy that'll get you two touchdowns. Or on the other end, he'll get you one catch for 11 yards. So if you like that that those range of outcomes, you know, maybe you can throw a dart at him, but this early in the season, you shouldn't be reaching for a tight end. I said a few times, this is the deepest that the fantasy tight end class has ever been. I mean, there are, this class goes 20 deep with talented tight ends. So Darren Fells definitely falls out of that top 20. So I think there's guys with higher floors. And for me, sometimes it's not always about the upside with tight ends. It's about that floor. You know, I really don't want my tight end to give me zero points. I'd rather take the safe five points and maybe he gets you 10 plus if they get you a touchdown. But Darren Fells has a wide range of outcomes that I am Percy. He's very volatile. He's one of the most volatile tight ends, uh, I would say, of any tight end in the league right now. And I don't think there's a scenario in which I'd start him unless you're in a two tight end, tight end premium league, then maybe he's worth the dart throw. Kickers, I'll go over briefly the kickers and defense. Uh, kickers, both are start candidates. Harrison Bucker was drafted as a top five kicker. Uh, either way, whether this is a game where only 55 points are scored or this is a game where 80 points are scored Harrison Bucker always puts up solid points just because the Chiefs have a high-powered offense he's a definite start Kai Fairburn he is a decent streamer if you're looking for a kicker and didn't pick one up I think there's better options out there but if you really believe this is going to be a high scoring game he'll definitely have some value Defensively, I'm not touching either one of these defenses just because of the possibility that it's an absolute shootout. So uh, if you're really into rolling the dice and risking it all, you can go ahead and play these defenses. But even in the 31 to 24 game, these are two QBs that don't make a ton of mistakes. And I wouldn't expect either one of these defenses to put up significant fantasy numbers. If you really want to take a chance on one of them, maybe the Chiefs, because the Texans line hasn't been uh, as strong as the Chiefs. But the Texans have made improvements along that offensive line still. So I, I still win. There's no scenario in which I play them. So that's all I have for this game. I'll be previewing some of the other games this week, weekend later on. But if you don't already, make sure you subscribe to the Fantasy Mafia on YouTube. We have been posting all of our podcasts on Spotify, Apple Music, Anchor, Google Podcasts. So subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. There's a ton of conversation right now in the fantasy hotspot, which is fantastic to see. I know everybody's excited about football season, including myself. I'm ready to rock and roll with my 1 billion teams that I have. So make sure you keep the conversation going in the hotspot. Subscribe to the Fantasy Mafia, and we will see you guys next time.